Last episode, I discussed the idea that we could have an unusual Bundesliga winner, and as we sit here in December, Stuttgart, who we take on today, are top of the league and flying strong. Unfortunately, the status quo might not be changing all that much because both Leipzig and Bayern Munich are now in second and third, respectively, and either of them could go top of the table today. That will only happen, though, if we beat Stuttgart and they get a good result. And if we were to beat Stuttgart here, we could potentially, uh, well, find ourselves back in the top four, which is exactly where we want to be. On top of that, we've got a rather big game in the Europa League where we are going to be taking on the mighty Inter Milan, Internacional. They are currently fourth. We are currently third. Two of the better performing teams in the competition. One of the teams, whoever wins this match, is pretty much guaranteeing themselves a spot in the knockout round. Lots of big games on display today. A whole lot of football manager to catch you up on. Before we get into that, though, let's run the intro and get straight into things. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Building Berlin. Today is episode number 23, and if we look at the club profile screen, you might notice here Zach Hyen is now listed as a key player, a player who I do feel like is becoming more and more important to us, and like many players in the team, on a good run of form as of late. A sea of green in terms of his average rating. His form in the league has been impressive as well. Five assists, one goal. We'd like him to be chipping in with a little bit more, but ultimately, we are currently fifth in the league. We are currently performing well. And it's bizarre, really, because whilst the goals have been flowing courtesy of Lucas Nemesha, outside of the goal scoring, it really has been a team effort. A whole host of players turning provider. Sakayan right up there with assists. Malik Tillman, when we've played him, has been absolutely sensational so far this season. And slightly further down this list, you have the likes of Widrego, Diamande, who's having a first season to remember, I feel like. Putting in some really good displays, the 24-year-old, continuing to improve as well. And to be honest, I don't know if you can tell in my voice, I've just got a whole lot of optimism flowing at the moment. Perhaps some of that is due to our recent form. Of course, last episode, we beat Celtic. We did narrowly lose out to Borussia Dortmund. Since we played them, they have sacked Vincent Company. Um, yeah, Dortmund continuing to be a bit of a shambles makes it more annoying that we couldn't beat them last time. Now, in the DFB Pakal, we did make it through it against Braunschweig. Uh, we won this game 3 0. Lower league opposition, Nemecha, Dimirovic, and Zach Hyen with the all important goals. That was the final game of October. Since then, another month and a half of football, another seven games played, and only one defeat to speak of. First and foremost, though, let's talk about some of these good results. The first of which, a 3 0 win against a Bayer Cusen team who were flying high at the top of the league. Nemecha, you might remember, didn't have a goal in his first six league games. He's now up to six goals in his last four league games. He has been absolutely sensational for us, this man. Looking really, really good. Still is attracting some interest from further afield. Don't plan on selling him. But with January approaching, I mean, mm, if, if a bit of 40 million came in, I might have to consider it. And the reason I say that is because we've got players like Max Morstead, Demirovic, who's got goals when called upon, and, uh, well, even Tillman to a certain extent, um, behind uh, Nemecha, who are actually scoring goals when I give them chances. I mean, there's Morstead here who you could argue should be, could be, maybe will be, sooner rather than later, starting more games for us. Um, yeah, we have all these blessed striking options, and whilst none of them are proven goal scorers like Lucas is... I don't know, 36 million pounds, it'd be hard to turn down. That said, I suppose I really shouldn't be looking to sell him in January, particularly because we are currently, well, potentially fighting for Champions League spots, and I feel like without him, that task might be made a little more difficult. Speaking of European football, over in the Europa League, we beat Nice 3-2, came back from behind, uh, well, twice they did. Eventually, though, we did get the all-important goal, Demirovic, two goals on off the bench. He looked really, really good in this game, yet to score for us in the Bundesliga, but coming up trumps in this competition, twice he's come on off the bench to score in Europe, and his two goals in this one were vital. We beat Gladbach 2-1, but unfortunately succumbed to a, well, somewhat predictable defeat against Leipzig. Leipzig, very, very good. 2-0 defeat on this occasion. Benjamin Sesko did get on the score sheet. Last year, this man was unplayable. 21 goals in 28 games. He actually slowed down goal scoring towards the end of the year. Still very, very good this season, but not perhaps quite to the same level. Perhaps goes some way to explain why, unlike last year where Leipzig ran away with the league, they're not really running away with it this year. In fact, when you look at the league last year, Leipzig lost two games in the whole of the season. So far this season, they've already lost four. Yet the standards here in Germany this season 
are slipping across the board. To end the month of November, we beat Partizan Belgrade 4-0. Great result there. Followed it up with a draw at home against Wolfsburg. The kind of game I should be and wish we were winning. We came back from 1-0 down to take a 2-1 lead. They scored later on in the second half. Nemesh's two goals against his former club weren't enough. Most recently, though, against Mainz, knowing that we have this game against top of the table Stuttgart to prepare ourselves for, I chose to play a rotated team, a very rotated team, and good news for us, it worked out just about in the end. Now that game against Mainz was only three days ago, but knowing we had this game against Stuttgart who are top of the league, I needed to rotate things. And having got a convincing result with our B team, I now look at the first team, which is pretty much ready and raring to go. Full fitness just about across the board. Unfortunately, Martel carrying an injury. And I feel as prepared as I can be for this first game today. Now, in terms of team selection, this is the team we are going with. Hadel is going to be rocking between the sticks. The goalkeeper hasn't been in the craziest of form so far this season, but a slight improvement on last season. Four clean sheets in 14 games. It's not exactly super wowing, is it? Although defensively, we've never been the best team. Looking at the defence at right back, we are going with Bullet, of course, the 19-year-old player, continuing to play, continuing to develop, continuing to look more than up to the task, as can be said for Nets when he's fit. That is a big asterisk when he's fit because uh, he's actually missed the last four weeks of football due to a twisted ankle. Martel himself is coming back from an injury, a knee injury, which I don't really want to risk him with. So as a result, Bisek is going to start for us. He has started six league games for us so far, the 25-year-old, averaging a 7.0 rating. I feel like that's as good as you can expect. Alongside him, Taruna Riga didn't have the, the best start to his time at the club. I feel like he has got, come on and grown into the role a little bit more. That said, still looking for a little bit more, I think, from him this season. In the centre defence and mid position, we are going with Kraus, of course. Was called up for Germany's national team last year. Hasn't been back in the national team fray since. Despite the fact he's played a lot of football for us, his performances have left a little bit to be desired. We Drago is going to be one of our two centre mids for this game. He has been absolutely sensational this year. Has broken into the German national team at the tender age of 19, continuing to improve. Of course, does have an optional three-year extension on top of his current contract. This man is going to be here for the foreseeable future. Alongside him, Zach Hyen playing that Mazala role. A role he has played more and more this year. It's been where he's got all his assists from in the league. Playing down the middle just seems to suit him that little bit better. Over to his left, we're going with Diomande out on the wing, of course, on his stronger left foot. Over on the right-hand side, Alex Scott is putting in good performances when you actually look at the average ratings. When you look at zero assists and only two goals for an advanced playmaker, there's maybe a little bit of a question mark there, but ultimately, he's contributing and, well, that would be an understatement to describe Nemecha as contributing. Look at his form in the last 20 games. Look at the green bars. He has been absolutely sensational. Need him to be good again here today. It's weird, right? Stuttgart, we've played a few times in episodes, but this kind of game here, I feel like I have to come back for. They are a team massively overperforming, perhaps the team most comparable to us in the top few teams in terms of overperformance. Werder Bremen doing very well as well. Um, I think they're currently in fourth place, but we can pass them with a win in this game here and as the home side I feel like a win is what I expect yes Stuttgart might be top but I feel like when you look at our quality we have the ability what we need to do today is show a bit better finishing than we've shown in recent live comms and well that right there is not exactly a good omen is it if, if we need better finishing that was disappointing to say the very least nets at left back taking the free kick short down the line to Diamande the number 14 cutting inside gives it to Scott got options to his left and right gets caught out in possession now Thiago Thomas looking to bring the ball forward lays it back to Zagadou Endo of course the new signing at Liverpool in real life still playing at Stuttgart in this universe still trying to run their midfield for them he is on a booking though he's going to have a tight rope to walk here and we've managed to nick the ball away in a potentially dangerous area Diamande lots of green grass ahead of him in this wide area. He lays it back to Zakayan, of course, as a Mazala is going to look to come short, is going to look to go on his lonesome, and oh my word, it could have been a goal of the season contender. He has hit the woodwork there. For any Liverpool fans wondering, Jack, how good is Endo in Football Manager? Uh... Hmm, uh, you probably wouldn't get into Liverpool's team in game. Maybe he'll get a big upgrade before the next game. I know a lot of Bundesliga fans are very high on this guy. Of course, he is two years older in our save game here. I'm criticising him. He's played 11 games for them this year. They're currently top of the Bundesliga. Clearly, he's contributing enough on the pitch. Less than 10 minutes left of this first half. Both centimetres for Stuttgart on bookings is a little bit interesting. In terms of the actual stats for this game, we've had 66% of the ball, but there's been a lack of chances at either end. And ultimately, at the break... We're losing 1-0. I'm going to get shouty-shouty. Diamande looks demotivated. I'm going to give him a bit of encouragement. N now he hates me. 
That could have gone better. Okay, into this second half, we jump. And a kickoff highlight right away is going to give me some hope. Given how that first half went, if we can play more of the same in this one here, I back us to go out and win this game somewhat convincingly. Can we get a chance here? Great ball by Scott. Nemech is there. And right after I've just criticised Alex Scott for not getting assists, of course he gets his first assist of the season. Have to say, this was an absolutely sensational pass by Alex Scott. The number seven just plays it forward. Nemecha gets the ball down, gets it out of his feet nicely. One touch to control it, second touch to finish it. Finds the bottom corner, 20 seconds into the half. 15 minutes played of the second half. I was getting ready to make some changes, but we've got a set piece to deal with here. And deal with it, we will at least for now. Sadila, the French right back, is going to get the ball under control. Looking to get into a wide area. Looking to put it in. He does so. They hit the woodwork. Bullet's going to get it away from danger. But a little reminder that one goal, it might not be enough today. Okay, Zach Hyen and Diamande not having the best of games between them. Let's make some changes. I'm going to bring in Adriano to play at centre mid. Although we will be playing him as the centre mid on attack. Of course, the 19-year-old, a player who I really do feel like has a big future ahead of him. Have been giving him more and more minutes this year in the Bundesliga. Five starts, six sub-appearances. He's going to come on here and elsewhere. I'm going to bring in Tillman and with his addition to the team, we will be reverting back to an inverted winger out on the left-hand side. He's come in in this position a fair bit this year. Has done well when we've stuck him out on the left-hand side and well, we, we nearly scored before the changes even happened. It's dealt with initially. There might still be a half chance here, although Stuttgart defensively looking solid at the moment. Nets trying to make something happen. Before the subs happen, will anything happen? The answer is no. 15 minutes left of this game. I've got a bit shouty shouty with the players, tried to provide some encouragement. It's not been a, a quality attacking display, but defensively we've looked uncharacteristically sound thus far in this game. Going to make some changes, I think, at right back and left back. Nets and Bullet not having the best of games. We'll bring in Tower, we'll bring in MB, two very, very solid defensive options, just for a bit of fresh legs as much as anything else in those wider areas. Stuttgart are going to come and attack, as you imagine, in these next eight minutes. They want to get a goal they want to chase they want to push hard we are going to be tested at the back and with that in mind if we could just get that insurance policy second goal that would be rather nice adriano caught out in possession though maybe going to leave us a little on the back foot and while tower brought him onto the pitch to offer defensive solidity has given away the ball and stuttgart are back in this game i have to say this year in football manager there's too many things like this that happen where a player gets the ball under, under control and just as something nonsensical that really doesn't feel, make it feel like I'm watching football. I don't know if anyone else relates to this. Like the, This year's match engine in certain ways is an improvement on last year's, but there's little frustrations like that. It's hard to ignore. Okay, five minutes left of added time. Going to do one shout of encouragement. Is there to be a late goal? The answer is no. We have to accept a share of the spoils, given the fact they're top. Perhaps I should be happy with this, but when you look at the XG story, they had that one chance in that entire half, came for a defensive mistake, and ultimately that was enough to get them the all-important goal, and from there, we did nothing in the last 10 minutes. Neither did they, to be fair, but that definitely feels like two points dropped. So with that result, we don't even move into the Champions League spots because Werder Bremen are on 27 points. We are on 26. You can see here Bayern Munich have a game in hand still. Elsewhere, Leipzig drew against Mainz. Mainz are down in 16th. Uh, kind of shows again how ridiculous this league is. The team in second can't beat the team in 16th. Um... Yeah, it, it's a weird season. Anyway, we've got this next game against Internacional. Inter Milan doing very, very well in the Europa League. Their league form, though, in Serie A leaves a lot to be desired, or at least it did last time I checked. Of course, now that I've actually checked, they're up in third. I'm not just intentionally bad-mouthing them. They have jumped from seventh to third in the last three, four game weeks. They're on a recovery mission, Inter. Probably not the best of times to be playing them, although not really sure there's ever a good time to be playing them. Okay, we're playing Inter. They've got Barella. Barella is their keeper. Barella, rather good in Football Manager, it's fair to say. That home game is in five days' time. We're going to rest up the players, dust ourselves off a win here. We pretty much guarantee ourselves a spot in the knockout rounds of the Europa League. A win here could also be absolutely massive in terms of securing that top eight finish, which does mean one less round of the knockouts to go through. That is a rather desirable outcome. With that in mind, let's try and get a better result in this second game, shall we? Safe to say that last performance was disappointing in terms of results. It does feel like we tend to dominate games when it comes to possession, but not quite create enough. If that continues to be a pattern, 
maybe I do need to look at changing instructions, look at maybe looking to have less of the ball and actually getting the ball into the final third that little bit more. For this game here, though, not going to throw the plan out the window, going to stick with what we know. This is the team we're going with. Martel is back in the team. He is back fit and raring to go. Good news as well as we've had a fair few days rest, so everyone comes into this game in good shape. Only a couple of games left after this till the winter break as well. Kind of crazy how quickly we've been going through this season, but at least with this first half of the year, where there's not European knockout games, I have been just progressing between episodes that little bit quicker. I, I feel like I want to see more progress to this save game before the end of the Football Magic cycle, and if that means we do have to do slightly longer gaps between episodes, especially in the earlier half of the year, I'm kind of okay with that. Let me know if you're okay with that down in the comments too. So that Martel change is the only change that we're making to our 4-3-3 system we've been using on the regular. Somewhat curious to see how Internacional here are going to line up for this game. Currently third in Serie A on a recovery mission. They've got Timo Werner up front next to Lissandro Martinez. That is a scary front two in football manager terms. I feel like Werner and Martinez are two strikers that always do well in FM. Now, Inter are playing with this three at the back system with wing backs and two defensive mids. I feel like Fabian and Barella, two very good centre mids as well. So this is going to be a real test for us. They've only lost one game in the Europa League kind of group stage thus far in the opening five games. And whilst this game isn't essential for getting, I think, top is it top 24 for the knockouts? I'd still like to win this game as the home team. And well, if you want to do that, we need to be at our very best. We're playing one of the big boys of the Europa League in this game here. I do feel like when it comes to the fixtures we were randomly given, into Tottenham, um, difficult games, made more difficult when Martinez scores a goal like that. I mean, the way Inter are set up, I thought they were going to be defensively solid and not create a lot. Instead, they've scored very early on. Hadel got a really strong hand to it, but it wasn't quite strong enough. It hits the post. It rolls barely over the line. And we're coming back from behind and immediately it's time to get shouty shouty. So far in this game, we're not having as much of the ball as you might expect us to have, given, you know, past performances as of late. I do feel like in Football Manager this year, the three at the back system with wing backs and two defensive mids tends to be very good at holding on to possession, not always creating a load of chances. That said, who needs to create a load of chances when Timo Werner and Alessandro Martinez score goals like the goals they've scored in this game here from the two highlights we've had? I really thought when I mentioned they were good in Football Manager, maybe that would be some kind of jinx. Maybe somehow they wouldn't play as well. Instead, Timo Werner takes that ball down and then hits it on the volley with a little chip over the keeper. We're two goals down. This game feels like a write-off already. And I'm very, very tempted. <laughs> I'm very, very tempted to do this already. I is it too soon? I mean, Diamande can kind of play as a striker on the left-hand side. Zach Kayan can kind of play as a striker on the right-hand side. I mean, they, they both have a little bit of knowledge of the positions. Nemesha through the middle probably won't play him as a target forward. We'll play him as a complete forward instead. I mean, is this a stupid idea? My head says yes, but my heart says, screw it, we're 2-0 down against Inter. Let's guarantee more goals for the people at home. I feel like I should also acknowledge Inter have only had three shots on target. They've all gone in. As for ourselves, we've had six shots on target, nine shots total, but we've got nothing to show for it. And while well, we very nearly found ourselves three goals down, Barella hits that. Hadel tipped it over. Heroic save. Would be good if we could maintain a two-goal deficit before halftime. Of course, if we could close it down in the next couple of minutes, that'd be even better. But this does feel like the kind of half where maybe we just need to cling on for all that it's worth, get in at the break, get a bit shouty-shouty, maybe go again in the second half. Okay, halftime, two goals down. I do feel like the scoreline flatters them, but we've not had a highlight. So it becomes difficult to, you know, really big ourselves up in our performance in this game when that's the case. I think in this game here, I'm going to make a double change early on. I'm going to commit to the striker system change. I'm going to bring in Tillman. He's going to play as the target forward through the middle. That is definitely a role that he is... I want to say he's well suited to. In terms of his physique, definitely well suited to this role. Lacks a bit in strength, but in terms of aerial ability, he's got it. But they're going to have Demirovic at the left-hand side playing as an advance forward. And then we're going to have Nemecha on the right-hand side. If we don't score a goal in this game with these attackers on the pitch, things are not looking great for us. Elsewhere, I'm going to tell us to get a little bit more direct with our play. Let's get it forward to the big boys up top. Sometimes in Football Manager, you need a strategy. You need a plan. And other times in Football Manager, you just need to stick three big blokes up in the final third, lump the ball to them and hope that one of them can take the chance that comes their way. We are playing very attacking here. We are defensively all over the place here. 
It's <laughs> it's three nil. I mean, I know I've gone really attacking with the system. What has happened to our defence there? What has happened to our defence? Who? Someone stepped up to try and get the ball here. Who was it? I want to name and shame here. If I pause here, I mean, Martel, Tarunariga, crap. It's not a great reflection of our defence, is it? That goal. Onana's got an assist from goalkeeper. I'm fuming. I really thought with Scott and Widreya go at centre mid, you know, they'd pin back the defensive midfielders. With three strikers, we'd have their centre backs pinned back as well. And we'd be able to create a load of chances and maybe just limit the amount of possession they have. As things have transpired here, uh, it's not worked as I dreamed it might. And it could go from bad to worse. Taruna Riga puts in a good tackle. At this point, I feel like we've committed to the free striker system. We're 3-0 down at home. We might as well stay on the front foot and try and get a consolation, right? Martella, uh, Martel, we dre a go. Martel again with the ball. Lays it all the way back to Hadel. What I will say is our team and their team, kind of in terms of shape, kind of match quite nicely. You know, it's like a plug in a socket, the way the formations click together. Unfortunately, we're the ones getting electrocuted by the plug in the socket. It's 4-0. I'm not showing a highlight for this goal. It's getting embarrassing. I hope you can see what I mean about how the systems match together. I mean, <laughs> I say that like it's a good thing. Aesthetically pleasing to look at um, when you look at just the, the formations. When you look at what's going on on the pitch, I can't imagine anything worse. Borella's nearly made it five. At this point, we, we might as well make some changes. Adriano, get some first team minutes in European football. Um, what Yen as well. You know what, what Yen? You need minutes. You've not had any starts and barely any sub appearances this year. Have another appearance here. I've got one last sub. Who are we going to bring on? Uh, you know what? I'm going to bring in Mantle in goal. He's been complaining about a lack of first team football. Why not give the 25 year old some minutes here? I do want to point out Hadel was on a 6.0 rating when I've taken him off there. I've been watching too much ice hockey, I think, in the last year. I'm now pulling my goalkeeper when he's not doing well, but sometimes needs must. If we come back and win this game or draw this game 4-4, I'll look like a tactical genius. Although I think just getting one goal might be a bit beyond us now, although maybe a chance there. I mean, it's a highlight for us. Um, it's that, that's a, that's as good as it's got so far in this match. Demirovic bring the ball forward, gets tackled, and now Pellegrini with the ball to bring it away for them. We're throwing so many men forward. Turam brings it forward. Tarunariga wins the ball nicely, then forgets the ball exists, and now they're on the attack again. Timo Werner's having our pants down. Tarun, it's 5-0. Turam scored. Why is Werner so good in Football Manager? This man is always hilarious in Football Manager. Why is it about this bloke? I say that. His goal scoring record isn't even that good for international. But against us, he's just... He, he's too good. He's too... He's got a hat trick. Has he got a hat trick? No, he's got... He's got... He's got two. He's not got a hat trick yet. Maybe I'm seeing the future. We've scored! This is about to be ruled out, isn't it? Great header by Martel. That just runs the halfway line. If we steal the ball, they can't say it's not a goal. That's the logic I'm going with. The goal's counted. We've got an equaliser for the second half. That's not correct at all, is it? They're winning the second half. 3-1, Jack. I can't... They're not even winning a half. I'm just looking for silver linings and there are none. I mean, there's another half. We could get another goal. We, we can make it 5-2. Then it looks a bit more respectable. Adriano forward to Lucas Nemesha. Not a great episode today in terms of actual results, it's fair to say, but can we end on a bit more of a high? Bastoni with the ball at the back, lays it back to Onana. What's his name? He's launched it forward. Martel is there. Bullet inside. Scott. Nemetia through. Finishes it. The assistant's raised his flag. I hope he's onside because 5-2 sounds impressive, but sadly, with the assistant raising his flag, I feel like this is just going to be offside. VAR, give it, just give us it out of, you know, courtesy. It's ruled out. It's 5-1 still. I don't say this lightly. What a bloody awful episode. <laughs> I don't know what I expected from this game here. This was not it. With this performance, I feel compelled to go out and spend some money in the January transfer window. I mean, we've got £6 million in the bank and some wage budget. We have still got our Austrian Swiss or Liechtensteiner siding as well. We didn't use that in the summer, so there's our mini wild card to use and potentially German signings we can make. Apparently Bullet needs a rest. Good news for Bullet. We've got a winter break coming. And as you can see, got two Europa League games left against PAOK and Rijeka. I want to believe we win those games comfortably. I mean, I looked at things here just as we were advancing through. We are still technically in the top eight, although PAOK are currently in seventh. Rijeka are in ninth as well. 
I looked at those games and thought, team from Greece, team from Croatia, easy wins. I'm now looking at this table thinking, maybe this isn't actually that comfortable after all. That said, with two games left, we have 13 points. So we are actually guaranteed a spot in the knockout rounds at the very least. So as much as those games might be interesting for the neutrals and if you're from Croatia or Greece, in terms of what they're going to mean for our season, Hopefully not a great deal. Okay, well, today was an absolute bloody disaster. The defeat against Inter was bad. The draw against Stuttgart suddenly doesn't seem so awful. We're fifth in the Bundesliga as we approach the halfway point. This is where we were in this league last year. I want to continue to improve year on year. If we want to do that, we need to step things up in the second half of the season. We need to be better at the back. Anyway, gang, we are going to wrap things up there for today. We will be back probably during the January transfer window, maybe after the January transfer window. There may be new signings, there may not be. You'll have to come back next time to find out. If you've enjoyed today's video, drop a like on it. See you tomorrow, same time and place as always, for more Union Berlin action and until next time until then it's me jack and i'll see you all again on the next one i'm out